talk about the vertical alignment, which is the road profile, the proposed road, the center line of the road that you're going to drive on. Okay? The minimum slope is half percent, and the maximum desirable slope is six is five uh, percent. So if your road is at least half percent in profile, and the road is maximum, uh, sorry, 0.5 percent, if the maximum is five percent, you're within the standards. You can do that or anything in between. It does say here with allowable variance, uh, you could increase the five to six percent, but you need permission from the uh, commissioner of engineering and public works. So uh, you could push it up to six percent if there's something uh, that five percent just won't work for, and you need to make it a little steeper. But maximum is going to be within the standards, 0.5 minimum, five percent maximum. You could push it to six with permission. Okay, so that's what this paragraph speaks to. So on any road, the minimum is 0.5 percent. Okay, now on our design, and let's go to my drawing, on our road profile design, if you zoom in on your profile, okay, uh, you will all have an intersection with an existing road. Okay? And let me just trace this. I'm going to draw end point, and I'm going to use a layer zero. I just want to highlight something. Uh, I'm going to draw a polyline from the center here to here and from here to here. This is the pavement. This is the center line, the crown of the road. This is the edge of asphalt, this is the edge of asphalt. And from here to here is the shoulder, and from here to here is the shoulder. Okay? So that's typical on a rural road. And then there's an embankment, either down or up or whatever's happening. But this typical shape is on everybody's uh, profile, that you're all connecting to an existing rural road, which means there's uh, center line, edge of asphalt, edge of shoulder. Okay? And generally, you're looking at approximately 2% fall on the cross-section uh, cross of the pavement, 6% on the shoulder. Okay? So I just want to put this into the context of what you learned in highways. So you're all dealing with this. Your road profile design starts right there at the edge of asphalt. Okay? So I want to start my vertical alignment design right there. I want to match the station and the elevation of this blue dot right here, this blue dot. That's my connection point. I don't want to rebuild any part of the existing road. So in the plan view, and this is the one I'm doing, in the plan view, my profile, this is my alignment. I'm going to keep the uh, shoulder on, on this side. I'm going to keep the edge of asphalt, the center line, the edge of asphalt. So my design, I'm going to draw a line from the intersection of my design center line to the existing edge of asphalt. That's the first point. This blue dot is the first point. I'm going to design my road up to the edge of asphalt, okay? and then from there into the site, I have some flexibility to do what I want. Okay? So that's the first point. The elevation there has to match existing, and the station value of the alignment tells you where to put it in the profile, right? So there's an alignment. Uh, there's an alignment that tells you there's a certain station value, right? Zero is here, so whatever this distance is to here, that's the first station. And then the elevation comes from the existing ground surface, and that's the first point on your profile. So the concept, and it's the same for everybody for, for the profile, what I want to do is start, and this is a generalization, I'm going to massage details out of this, okay? I'm going to build it up a little bit at a time and show you where you need to make, uh, make some decisions. I want to, I'm just going to do this with other part. I want to draw, uh, I'm just going to draw a line to illustrate what I'm saying. I'm going to draw a line from this intersection right here, and I want to go all the way to the end of the subdivision at half percent. Turn off my host next. I want to go all the way uphill at half percent. Okay? And if it takes me out of the grid, the grid will adjust. Okay? I'm just drawing this in AutoCAD. So there's the minimum slope half percent. I'm just approximating it. This is the concept. Okay? You and I are in a boardroom right now. We're discussing what the design should be. This is that discussion. So here it is. For every subdivision, we're going to outlet all of our sewers. So I want to connect my storm and my sanitary to the existing maintenance holes. I want to connect my water main to the existing water main. And when it rains, if the sewer, the storm sewer is full, I want my road to act like a river. If the sewers are full, if water can't get into the sewer, the road will then uh, fill up with water in the gutter and flow. Which way is it going to flow? I want it to flow from the bulb down and out to the existing road. So everybody's concept for overland flow is from the bulb is the highest elevation, and it's going to go downhill all the way and out to the existing uh, the existing subdivision uh, new intersection okay so that's the concept for everybody it doesn't matter which subdivision you have wherever your existing road is you're going to come up at the minimum slope half percent all the way to the end of the cul-de-sac 
there any questions about that? And then the pipes, when we get into the pipe design, will be parallel and below the road. So they'll be just underneath the road connecting to the existing maintenance holes. Okay. But we'll worry about the servicing later. But you need to know a little bit about both. So when you talk about municipal design, there's a little bit of, um, uh, it's a cyclic thing. You have to design the road profile to do your grading, to do your pipe design, to do your road profile, to do your pipe design to do your grading to do your road profile it's kind of cyclical right so it's an iterative process you have to kind of do something and then advance the other thing, design and then make sure that the first thing that you did is still comparable to the details you're creating later okay so a, a little bit of a, a, a discussion about the design process but uh, i need a profile so that i could put my pipes underneath it with uh, the proper amount of cover and then the road profile is going to dictate all of my lot grading but if the lot grading is not working, I may have to change the profile. And if I change the profile, I might have to revisit my pipes and so on. So it's kind of like juggling jello, right? You're, you're, you're trying to do one thing, and then it's affecting other things. But you have to start somewhere. So usually one of the first steps is design all the road profiles. Again, we only have one, so we're, we're, we're learning with just one road. But certainly this applies to any subdivision. If you have 1, 2, 10, 50 roads, you want to have a sense of the road uh, profile design throughout the subdivision. And that includes thinking about the uh, servicing. Which way are the pipes going to flow? Which way is the overland flow going to flow? Like what, what if, the, if the sewers are full, how is the water going to flow on the road? And so on. So you have to have a sense of the entire concept of the design before you actually start doing the details. The focus of this course, again, is to do the detailed design based on the concept that I'm discussing with you. So really, I'm designing it. You're filling in all the details. So I'm treating you more like a junior designer, senior drafts person. Okay? So you can draw a lot of things. You've got a lot of experience with AutoCAD. Uh, and then you have some experience with design. So I'm going to lay out what the concept of the design is. You're going to fill in all the details. Okay? And that will generally be your role when you, when you start working. If you get a job in municipal design uh, with a consulting firm uh, doing subdivision roads or any other kind of municipal design, uh, it includes commercial properties like uh, your big box stores and parking lots um, and so on. The skills I'm teaching you are transferable, um, but the reason I use a subdivision, a residential subdivision, is because you'll, everything you do in a subdivision can be transferred to any other type of land development uh, design. Right? So once I cover the residential case, the other ones kind of are uh, a simplified version of some of the tasks I'm going to teach you. So because the minimum slope is half percent, and this is where I want to connect. I want to come up from the existing road, uphill at the minimum slope, all the way to the end of the subdivision. So that when it rains, water flows to the road, the existing road. Okay. Any questions about that concept, that design concept? And if, again, if you, you can unmute yourself if you want to ask any questions. Okay. There's a lot more detail to come, but that's generally it. Make sure it all flows out. And we'll get into the details. Any questions? Okay, and where did I get the half percent? I looked at the standard. So the standard tells me it'll be half percent. Okay. Now, if you remember when you drew in the plan view, when you drew in the plan view, the um, edge of pavement and the back of curb and so on, you remember, and let me do this again, you remember the width of the pavement? How wide is the pavement, gutter to gutter? Anybody remember? What was the width of edge of pavement to edge of pavement? Or in more detail, what's the distance from gutter to gutter? That's the right of way. The asphalt, the, the, not the asphalt, the pavement. Remember the width of the pavement? Yeah, Michael, yeah, yeah, 8.5. 8. 8. Raymond, 8.5. So the width is 8.5. So to find the edge of asphalt, I'm going to offset, or not the edge of asphalt, the edge of pavement. I'm going to offset by half of 8.5, which is 4.25. So if you offset your center line, even if it's an alignment, it'll produce a polyline. That's generally where my edge of pavement is, right? On a typical right-of-way, if you go to the distance from the end point, oops, if you draw a line from the street line perpendicular across the road, that's 20 meters, okay? typical 20 meters. The only spots that aren't exactly 20 meters are the intersection, the crescent or the knuckle, and the, uh, the cul-de-sac. Okay? 
thing. So generally speaking, you can offset by 4.25, and then you have to go back and spend some time at the intersection, at the knuckle, at the cul-de-sac, anywhere where it's not typically 20 meters. And even on the curve, if you have a curve, if I show it from here, perpendicular to here, that's still 20 meters, even though it's on a curve, right? So I can just offset the center line four and a half, four point two five on either side, and I have my edge of paper. Now I go back and I draw the bulb the way it needs to be drawn. I draw this bulb the way it needs to be drawn. I use my fillet command here at the intersection to get my edge of uh, my curve. Remember, my curve is seven point five meter radius and so on. So, just like you spend time in plan at the non-standard widths, right? Wherever it's twenty meters, I'm already done. Where it's not exactly 20 meters, and the three typical cases are intersections, uh, crescents, and cul-de-sacs, I need to go and spend a little more time there and, uh, and, and, and work out those details. When it comes to profile design, those three elements, intersections, crescents, and cul-de-sacs, require attention as well, because they're non-standard in terms of width. Okay? So when we look at the road profile, remember I said half percent? Right, I can just start drawing here. I'm just doing this with AutoCAD. I will use Civil 3D in a moment. If I'm going to start here, right, that's my starting point. I'm just going to go up all the way to the end at half percent. And that satisfies the standard minimum half percent throughout. And that is acceptable anywhere you have a standard 20 meter right of width. You can do that. There are exceptions, however. Let's go back to the standard. Here are the exceptions. The minimum gutter grades for cul-de-sacs and elbows, notice they're using the word elbow here instead of, instead of uh, crescent. So the cul-de-sac and the elbow, the minimum gutter grade has to be at least 1%. So if the main road is half percent, then the gutter on the cul-de-sac and the elbow has to be at least 1%. Okay, so now we're talking about two different things. This is the center line requirement, minimum half percent. This is the gutter requirement, 1%. So what does that mean? Let's go back to the plan here. So if the road profile, right, if I draw, if I pick a point here, if I pick a point here, let me just draw a line from here, perpendicular to here, and I draw a line from here, perpendicular to here, and I go across to the gutters, and I trim, I'm just gonna trim in this zone, so arbitrarily, if I start here and I go to here, if the slope from the crown of the road to this point on the crown of the road, if from here from, from here all the way to here was half percent down, what would the slope be along the gutter? So if the slope from here to here is down at half percent, or if we go in the direction of increasing change, if from here we have a positive 0.5 percent grade, what would the slope be in the gutter from here to here? Any ideas? If the center line slope is half percent, what would the gutter slope be between these two positions on the road? Anybody else? Yeah, that's a more general. Uh, that's a more general um, statement, Brian. The same. Whatever the road profile is, the gutter is going to be the same. Right? So if you look at the road section, I'm just going to draw something uh, here again. Right? If the profile, if we look at a standard pavement, right? if the slope here at the center line is half percent, then the slope in the gutter would be parallel. Right? Let me see if I can draw this in 3D. Right? I'm going to draw a line from here to here, from here to here, and from here to here. Kind of an isometric view. If this is half percent, this is going to be parallel, half percent. This is going to be parallel, half percent. Everybody agree with that statement? So whatever the center line road profile is, the gutter would be the same. Okay? Now, when it comes to standard 20 meter uh, widths, so let's look at a curve. Not everybody has a curve, but let's look at a curve. If I look at this curve, I'm going to draw uh, an arc from the end point here to a near point here, to the end point here. If I consider just this curved part of the road, okay, if the slope on this line, this curved line, is half percent, right, if I offset that, let me just change this to a different color so it's easy to see. I'll make it uh, magenta. Okay, so I'm going to offset 4.25. So on this side, 4.25, on this side, 4.25. If the slope on the center is half percent, 
what's the slope on the gutter? If the slope here is half percent, will the slope on the gutter here be the same? Not really. It won't be the same. If this is half percent, right? So if the, sl if the fall, think about the vertical. If the elevation here drops over this distance to this elevation here, the length of the arc is the run of the slope. The difference in elevation between this point and this point is the rise. So if you take this elevation and you subtract this elevation, that's the rise. If you divide by this length, that's the run. That's the horizontal distance. You'll get half percent. If you go to the gutter, you'll see that the elevation difference between this point and this point is the same as the center, right? So whatever the gutter is, I'm going to go down to the gutter. I'm going to go down to the gutter. The vertical difference between this point and this point is something, some difference. The difference in elevation between this point and this point is going to be the same. But then I'm dividing by, is this distance longer or shorter than the center line? Is the inside arc longer or shorter than the center line? The arc length is shorter. So, if you take the elevation here, and you take the elevation here, and you subtract one from the other, you'll get the rise. If you divide by a shorter run, will this slope in the gutter be steeper or flatter than half percent? Will it be steeper or flatter? It's going to be steeper. And what about this one? Is this slope going to be steeper or flatter than half percent? It's going to be flatter. Again, the same difference in elevation. The elevation here, the elevation at the beginning, the elevation at the end, the vertical difference is the rise. The difference in elevation is the rise. The length of the gutter is the run. It's going to be flatter than half percent. Now, in this case here, when you're dealing with a standard 20 meter right of way, they'll accept the fact that if you use a minimum slope in the center line, the outside curve will be flatter, but it'll be so close to half percent that that's acceptable. Okay, so they allow that. So at wherever you have a standard 20 meter right of way, if the center line slope is half percent, the gutter will be either a little bit steeper on the inside and a little bit flatter on the outside, and we accept that. Okay, well, we won't accept it is where there's a gross difference. So for instance, I've got some sketches over here. When it comes to the cul-de-sacs, the cul-de-sacs and the crescents, the distance around the gutter on this bulge and the distance around the gutter on this bulge, it's not parallel. It's not like a standard right-of-way. Okay, so in this case here, they want the gutter line to be at least half percent. Uh, sorry, one percent. Okay, so we want to make the gutter one percent, which means I have to make the center line steeper or flatter than the outside turn. So if I want this slope around here, and let, let me draw the zone. Let me draw the zone. Here's a standard 20. I'm going to draw a line from the end of this curve here, perpendicular to center. And if I extend that to the right of way on both sides, with respect to this line, this side is typical 20 meters wide. This is where it starts to get non-standard. And then on the other side, same thing. I'm going to draw a line from the end point of this curve perpendicular to center, and I'm going to extend it to the right of way on both sides. So on this side, typical 20. On this side, typical 20. In this zone, and let me trim some stuff off. Right? I'm going to, first I'm going to get rid of the back of curve. We're dealing just with the gutter. Okay, so this is, if I measure the distance from here, perpendicular to here, it's 8.5, right? Gutter to gutter. If you drew this correctly, and I'm, I'm not going to demonstrate that. I want you to try and figure that out. But if you drew this correctly, you're going to have this bulge. Okay? On the inside, on the inside, these are actually parallel. So the gutter, the gutter line here maintains its position. So if I offset 4.25 to the inside, it falls exactly where that gutter is. So this radius and this radius are parallel. I have a common center. Right? I have a common center. So it's typical on the inside. Okay, On the outside, you can see it gets much wider and then comes back. So I'm going to trim off the standard stuff here, and I'm going to trim off the standard stuff here. Okay, So let's have this discussion again. If the slope from here 
all the way along the profile to here was half percent, is this gutter line slope going to be steeper or flatter? It's going to be steeper. Why? Because if you take the elevation at the center line and you subtract this elevation here, right, if we're falling downhill in this direction, the difference between this elevation and this elevation is the rise. I can draw that in profile, is the rise. Right? There's a certain rise, the difference in elevation between this point and this point. And then there's the length of the center line of the road. There's the length of the center line of the road. It has a slope of half percent. If I look at the inside turn, the vertical difference between here and here is the same as the center line. So this rise is the same, but it's shorter. The distance along the length of this green line is shorter than this one. Shorter. So it is steeper. Everybody see that? So the rise is the difference in elevation from the beginning to the end of this cul-de-sac bulb, or this crescent bulb. And then the run, the horizontal distance, is actually this distance. It's made up of a line, a curve, and a line. Okay, same thing on the center. Everybody see that? The rise is the same. On center, it's longer. This is longer than this. And you can see that here. And, and then this is just an approximation, just to show you what the, the kind of the vertical looks like. If you look at this line, the elevation difference between this point and this point is the same as the other two. Right? This rise is the same. But the run, the length of this is longer than this, longer than this. Much longer. So the slope is going to be flatter. And not only flatter than half percent, but significantly flatter. So when that happens, the municipality says, you know what, I don't want this to be, I don't, if you make this half percent, this is going to be flatter than half percent. But because this is so unusual, it's so wide, I want the gutter in the elbows to be at least one percent. So I'm going to go back to the standard, just to remind you of that. Elbows shall be, right, the gutter in the elbow should be at least 1%. So if we go back to my sketch, I'm just trying to give you a visualization. Okay? If this length, this green line here, if the length, that's the run, if I want the vertical difference from here to be here to be 1%, if this was 1%, what would the slope on the center line be? Flatter or steeper than 1%? If I made this exactly 1%, which is this slope, would the center line slope be flatter or steeper than one? Same rise, shorter run. Is this steeper or flatter than this? It's going to be steeper. So when you're designing your road profile in the case of an elbow, you have to, you have to design the gutter so that it's at least 1% which dictates what the slope on the center line needs to be as a minimum. So if I make this half percent, this is going to be flatter than half percent. If I make this one percent, this is going to be flatter than one percent. Still no good. I need to kind of reverse engineer it. I need to guarantee this is one percent by making this one on center steeper than one percent. And that's the trick. And this is a technique I call the uh, when the dog wags the tail. I have to design the profile so that the gutter works in the end. So I'm going to start with, if this was 1%, what should this profile slope be? If this was 1%, what should this slope be? Okay? And it's a pretty quick calculation. I'll show you. Okay? So I'm going to do a little bit of hand sketching. I'm going to go to my overhead camera. Okay, does everybody understand the, the problem? In this area, right, where the standard 20 ends and then begins again, right? So this is the zone. This is the, between this station and this station, I have a center line that has to guarantee a minimum gutter grade of at least 1%. So I'm going to reverse engineer. I'm going to fix this at 1% and calculate what should this profile be. If this is exactly 1%, what should this be? That's the question. Okay. And this is something you all need to calculate. Now, the nice thing is with AutoCAD, you can get the length of the run. Right? This is a pollen line. If I list it, it'll tell me how long it is. So that's the run. And if I list this one, it'll tell me the run. That's the total length from beginning to end. Same thing here. 
So if you use a polyline, you can get the run of the triangle. Then we can calculate the rise based on 1%, right? So I know the run comes from the drawing. I know the uh, slope, I can calculate the rise. Okay, so let me go to my sketch. I'm going to do this overhead camera stuff. So let me see if I can draw this again. So if I have a gutter that does this, so here's the center line. There's a line, there's a curve, there's a line. That's the center line. On the outside, it's going to curve away. It's going to curve away, and then it's got a curve that connects them. So that has a certain length. That's the gutter line. Okay. What's the length of the gutter line? Let me get the length. Let me go back to the drawing. So what's the length of this line? I'm going to list this. The total length of the whoops, the total length of the polyline tells me how long the gutter is. 52, 372. 52, 372. 52.372. And what's the length of the center line? 36,890. 36.890. Okay, back to my sketch. Okay, so this is, let me draw it a little better. 52.372, it's a little easier to read, sorry. And 36,89. So that's the length of the gutter where the bulge starts and the bulge ends, right? And then we still have the center line of the gutter on this side. We don't worry about this gutter. Okay? We're, we're, we're not going to worry about this gutter. It's the one on the outside that dictates. So if I know the length of this gutter, I'm going to draw that run. There's the length, 52, 52.372. And then I'm going to draw this triangle. The run here is 36, so 36.890. If I need this to be minimum 1%, right, I want that to be 1%, then this slope has to be 1%. Okay, so I'm just trying to relate what you see in plan to kind of a pro point, right, 90 degrees. I know the run. I know the slope. What's this rise? If the run is 52.372 and it's 1%, what's the rise of this triangle? Have your calculators. Anybody else want to confirm that? Right. So the rise would be 0 0.524. You're going to work the three decimal places. Okay. Now, the difference in elevation from this point to this point, the rise is this height here. The difference between the center elevation and the center elevation at this point is the same. You have, to, you have to recognize that. The difference in slope and elevation between here and here is the same as it is between here and here. So this rise is also 0 0.524. What's the slope on the center line? And give it to me to three decimal places. What's the slope of this? So I know the run. Then this is the trick. This has to equal this. That's the whole point. So what's the slope of the center line? Okay, and this is a calculation you're all going to have to perform. You're going to get this length and this length from your particular crescent, right? It's going to be different than mine. Everybody has a different geometry. Right? So we take uh, 36, uh, sorry, uh, 0.524 divided by 36.890 equals times 100. And we get a percent grade of 1.420%. Okay. So if I design my profile between this point and this point at 1.42%, that guarantees that the gutter slope is at 1%. Everybody agree with that statement? If you don't understand why that's true, then now's the time to figure it out. Okay. And then the other thing you'll notice, the distance from here to here on the inside gutter is going to be shorter than 36, but the rise is the same. So this, this gutter is going to be steeper than 1.42. It's going to be greater than 1.42. So this takes care of itself because it's shorter. So when you're doing an elbow, assume that the gutter on the outside is 1%. You have to calculate what the center line gradient is going to be. So if I design the profile between this station and this station at 1.42, that guarantees that the gutter will be at least 1%. Okay. 
Now, 1.42, and there's more decimal places, it's kind of a, a weird number. It's not a non-standard number. When we're designing road profiles, we'd like to pick a nice, clean number to work with. And typically, we use multiples of 0 0.5 or 0.25%. So I would round this up. I'm going to make this a little bit steeper. So the next closest value is going to be, you know what, just call it 1.5. If I make this steeper than 1.42, what will the slope on the gutter be? Will it be steeper or flatter than 1%? Will the gutter on the outside be steeper or flatter than 1%? Anybody else? It's going to be steeper. So if I make this 1.5%, if I make this steeper, this is a bad drawing, let me redraw it, right? whatever this slope is, right, 142, if I make it steeper, 1.5, then the rise gets bigger, this will be the same rise, and then this gets steeper than 1%. So I start with a calculation, make this exactly 1%. Figure out what this slope needs to be, and then round it up a little bit. Round it up to this multiple, either a quarter or a half percent uh, of, of, uh, of, uh, of a percent. So I'm going to round it up to 1.5. If I make the center line a little bit steeper than 142, that guarantees the gutter is going to be a little bit steeper than 1%. And now my design on the center line is nice and clean. I have a nice, clean number to work with. Okay? And that's traditionally the design you do in profile. You get to choose your slopes. Make them nice, clean numbers to deal with, right? The gradients should all be a multiple of a quarter or a half percent. That's kind of a traditional notation, okay? 142 exactly will give you 1% exactly, right? But we don't have, remember, this is a minimum. So I'm going to do a nice, clean design on the center line. I'm just going to make it steeper, call it 1.5, and then that guarantees this is bigger than 1%. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, how you input all this into the into the uh, system is, is going to be a different uh, a different calculation. So when you go to your uh, once you draw, and this is uh, uh, here's another example of why you have to correct any mistakes that might happen on the uh, on the previous assignment. If we go back to AutoCAD, if you draw this correctly, if you draw this correctly and you draw this correctly, you can get the length, the run, right, the distance. You can get the run from the drawing. Right? But if these are drawn incorrectly, then this entire calculation is going to have to be revisited. Okay? So that's how you design the profile on center so that you guarantee a minimum gutter grade on the outside of the elbow at 1%. Next semester, you're going to deal with elbows again in Milton. You have to perform this calculation again. You must design the center line to guarantee a minimum gutter grade on the outside. And I'll do a review next semester, but I expect you to be able to do it already, right? So you should practice this calculation and determine what you need. Okay? There will be a way of checking later when we do the actual model of the, uh, of the profile, uh, but that'll, that'll come when we do our uh, input. Any questions about the elbow? Okay, so this calculation here, take the time. Make sure you figure out what your center line slope should be in the zone where the elbow is to guarantee a gutter grade of 1%. Okay? All right. So, that's one thing, the elbow. Professor, is there an elbow line? No, it's going to be different. It depends on the angle, right? So, the, uh, the, 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 the angle between uh, this center line... Uh, this this may, this line here, right? This line and this line might be different than mine. So you're going to get slightly different lengths for the center and the elbow. They'll be close, but they'll be a little bit different. Yeah, so everybody has to do their own, right? May not be exactly what I'm, I'm giving you the process, and I'm giving you an example with hard numbers, but it's just the concept, right? Whatever, whatever length you have for the outside gutter line, whatever length you have for the center line on your particular subdivision, that's what you have to use. Yeah, good question. Okay, so I'm just giving you the generic process. So that's the uh, that's the cul-de-sac. Uh, sorry, that's the elbow, the crescent. The uh, crescent has a similar uh, a similar calculation, 
Uh, it's a little bit different, uh, but it's a, a similar concept. Okay, so let's go through that one. So it has a similar problem. Let's think about this. If the slope, and let, let me find where the non-standard width starts, right? So here, I'm going to get rid of my better, uh, my back of curve. So I'm dealing again with the edge of asphalt, right? The distance uh, from here, perpendicular to here, is exactly 8.5. And when does that stop? Well, it stops from this point to this point. That's the last time you have a standard 20 meter right away, right? So this is a typical 20 down here, and then it starts to kind of morph. It widens into this bulb. So if we trim this off, right, that's typical 20. How do you deal with this? Okay, now, the profile design is along this geometry. That's the profile of the road. The gutter is this green line. That's the gutter. Okay, and I want it all to flow from here out. Okay, so the elevation is going to be high here and then downhill in this direction. And then from here along the gutter, downhill in this direction. Now, in this particular case, it is symmetrical, so I'm going to work with just half of this drawing. It's exactly the same on the other half, so I'm going to trim from center the gutter on one side. So the length of this that I just erased is going to be the same on both sides. It's symmetrical, right? So if I list this, I have a length of 57,445, undo, and if I trim it on the other side, this gutter length is also 57,445, right? So it doesn't matter whether you use the left or the right, it's symmetrical. This is the simplest case when it's symmetrical. It's not always symmetrical, but in this case it is, right? So let's deal with this, and then eventually you'll be able to deal with anything, okay? So what I want, let me trim it. I want this slope along this gutter to be exactly 1%. What's the slope on the center line supposed to be? Now this one's a little trickier because uh, we're not dealing with a center to edge of asphalt relationship. That's the same. Remember here? From the center to the gutter is a standard width. From the center to the gutter is a standard width, right? So the difference in elevation between this point and this point, vertical, remember the rise, is the same on this location and this location. That's not true here. Okay? Remember, this is the edge of the gutter, right? The pavement, it's the gutter line. Where would the edge of asphalt be? Right? What's the offset to the edge of asphalt? on the inside. Anybody remember? Think about the intersection you designed. How far is it from the gutter line to the edge of asphalt? Yeah. Okay, Samuel, that's the, the back of curve. Warren, you have it right. So if I offset by 0.3, here's where the asphalt is supposed to be. So that's the last point on the asphalt. So I'm going to trim off my center line right here. And I'm going to delete this. So this gap is 0.1 meters. This is the length on the asphalt of the center line. That's the profile I need to design. This is the length of the gutter from that point all the way out to the edge. Okay? So now the difference between these two points is different. The vertical difference is the different than the vertical difference here. So it's a little bit more complicated than what we did here. Right Here we're going from the center to the edge of pavement, standard width. From the center to the edge of pavement, standard width. Here we're doing something a little different. We're going from the center to standard width, and then from the center down to the gutter. The difference here vertically is different than the difference here vertically. So it's a little more complicated, but the idea is going to be the same. I need to know if this run is 1%, this shorter run on center is going to yield something steeper than 1%. What is that number? That's what I have to try and calculate. So let's do this with some actual hard numbers. I'm going to put some elevations to it. It'll be easier to see. Okay, so let's go back to my sketch. I'm going to do a hand sketch again. So I'm going to keep this drawing in mind. And if I go back to uh, my overhead camera, when I'm drawing my cul-de-sac, I have my, uh, and I'm going to exaggerate this, right? So where, where the typical 20 meter stops, right? There's your standard 20. Where your typical standard 20 stops. There's a center line that goes all the way to the edge of asphalt. And then you drop down into the gutter, a width of 0.3. And then that bulges and comes around and ends up here. So you have a typical width here. What's this dimension? What's the distance from here to here? Think about the offset in the typical right of way. How do you get from the center line to the edge, to the edge of pavement? What's the offset? Yep. Yeah. That. 425, 425, yeah, 4.25. And what's this gap here? Everybody remember what offset 
we used? 0.3, so this is 0 0.3. Now this 4.25 takes you from the center line of the road to the gutter point. Remember this? All right, takes you from the center to the gutter point. That is the 4, 4.25, okay? But it's made up of two parts. What's the slope of the asphalt pavement? Now you have to go back to the standard. Go back to the standard, uh, which is here. Remember page uh, 164, I believe. What's the slope on the, we're using RB2, right? What's the slope on the asphalt? 2%, so this is 2%. Let's go back and look at the details of a curb and gutter. So now you need to look at OPSD 600. I'm not going to worry about the slope, but if this is if you're at the edge of asphalt, right, and you're going to go over 300 millimeters or 0.3 meters from the edge of asphalt to the gutter point, what's the vertical difference? What's the run, the rise from the edge of asphalt point to the gutter point? Anybody see that on this drawing? right there, 25 millimeters. So if you're at the edge of asphalt and you go to the gutter, you fall down 0.025 or 25 millimeters, or in English, one inch. Okay, so let's go back to my drawing, my sketch. So if you fall from here to here, 0 0.025 meters. Okay, and I got that from the curve and gutter. Okay, so now, if the distance from here to here is 4.25, what's the distance from crown to edge of asphalt? What's this distance? First of all, what's this distance? What's this distance here from here to here? 0 0.3 meters. So what's the distance from here to here? What's the asphalt width? 3.95. Okay. Everybody see that? If you don't understand where these numbers are coming from, and, and notice I'm pulling it from different sources, right? I know the width of this number, 4.25, came from the cross section. How do I know? Because this is 8.5, and then we're going to take half of it to get to the gutter. Then I have to look at this standard. Well, the width is 300, so what's left over? 0.3 from 325 is 395. Okay, so that's where these numbers are coming from. So I'm compiling a sketch with information from various sources. And that's part of your job, right? What's this? What's that? What do I need to know? Okay. So I want to look at, from the center line, what's the vertical difference from the center line down to the gutter point? What's this height? this vertical distance in meters, three decimal places? Tron, okay, anybody else? Three decimal places, Samuel. We're going to work through the millimeters. Not quite. I'm going to go down 2%, 395. So I'm going to take 3.95 times 0 0.02. And that's the difference from here to here. And then I'm going to add this piece here. So I'm going to add uh, 0 0.025. So the vertical difference is going to be 0 0.104. 0 0.104 okay, in meters. I'm going to draw that a little more, a little bigger. 0 0.104 meters. Okay. Okay, so how do you get from here to here vertically? You go down 0.104. Okay. How do you get from here to here down from the edge of asphalt to the gutter? 0 0.25. Okay, so keep these numbers in mind when we're about to do these calculations. What I need from the drawing now is the length of the center line and the length of the gutter line. How long is the gutter? How long is the center line? So let's go back to the drawing. So I'm going to list this polyline. It's going to tell me the total length, 57.445. 57.445.
and I'm going to lift the center line. Remember, I trimmed it, right? It's, it's, it's 0.3 meters short here, right? Because this is where the asphalt ends. So I'm going to lift this, and it's 46191. 46.191. And let me go back to my sketch, 46.191. Go back to my camera. So this is 46191 from here to here. And this is 57445 from this point all the way to this point. Do we have to trim that center line on the side? No, you did not. No. I'm doing this on the side. So that's a good question. When I do this, when I'm doing these calculations, I'm going to make a copy of the bulb and I'm going to make a copy of the, of the, uh, of the crescent over to the side and then I can do my work, okay? But don't disturb the design. I'm just trying to get some information from, from this geometry, right? So I make a copy of these two things, like I did here, and then I try and work out the information I need. So don't disturb the drawing. You're just trying to pull some information off of that geometry. Good question, Michael. Do it off to the side. And I would keep this in the drawing. No one's ever gonna see it, but at least you have a record of where your numbers are coming from. What I'm doing here, I would do on paper. Right? This is a record. I would keep this in the file for the project so that if anybody asks me, hey, you know, what did you do? How did you do it? I have a record of all the numbers I used for my calculations. Okay? So now let's look at this information. Let's draw the profile from the gutter at the top to the gutter down at the bottom. Okay? So the length of that line is here. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw it down here. So there's the run. 57.445. Okay, I want it to be 1%. 1%. What's the rise? Calculate the rise. I know the run. I know the length. What's the, what's the rise going to be if the slope is exactly 1%? So you take uh, 57.445 and you multiply it by 0 0.01 and you get exactly, the three decimal places, 0 0.574. 574. Any questions about that? Everybody with me? So that's the vertical difference between this point at the top of the gutter and this point at the bottom. Right? It's going to flow in this direction at 1%. Now, I need to figure out what the rise is on the center line. I know the run. I need the rise. Okay? So the rise now is not 57, uh, 0.574. Okay? It's going to be different. Okay? First of all, if I knew, uh, let's do it with hard numbers. If this, if this was elevation 100, if this was elevation 100 at the top of the gutter, what would the elevation at the bottom be? No, we're falling downhill. You have to subtract one. So this elevation would be 99.426. Yeah, everybody understand how we did that? Okay. What would the elevation here be if I come from the gutter up to the edge of asphalt right here? What would this elevation be at the center line? What's this elevation at the top of the center line here? 100.026. Yeah, I would take the gutter elevation, 100, and add 25 millimeters, or 0 0.25, 0 0.025. Everybody with me? Okay. How do I get from the gutter to the center line of the road? How do I get from the gutter up to the center line of the road? What am I going to add to this number to get this number? And what's that elevation? So I'm going to take this elevation in the gutter and I'm going to add 104. So take 426 and add 104. So 426 plus 104, 99530. Yep. So this is 99.530. Everybody with me? 
there's any confusion, now's the time, because this is, this, is, this is a critical calculation. So now I know the elevation at the beginning, at the top of the center line profile, and I know the elevation at the end, where the bulb ends and I have my standard 20 meter right of way. The difference between these two elevations is the rise of this profile, right? So what's the difference between this number and this number? What's the rise? So 100.025 subtract 99.530. The rise is 495. I get 495 if you round everything. So if I look at the profile of the center line, I know the run, 46.191. I now know the rise, 495, 0 0.495. And now I can calculate the slope. That drawing, let me just write that again 0 0.495. I know it's hard to see up there. Let me, let me draw it somewhere else. It's a little bit fuzzy on screen. Draw it somewhere else. So I know that the run is 46,191. Let me see what I did here. The run is 46.191. One nine one. The rise we just calculated is zero point. Whoops, it's off screen. Sorry. Zero point four nine five. We can calculate the slope. Three decimal places. What's the slope? Point four nine five divided by forty six point one nine one equals times one hundred. Give me a percent grade. 107.2, right? Yeah, so this is 1.072%. Okay? So this is the cap. It's very similar to the last one, except the vertical difference is not the same, right? To come up to the from the gutter to the center line of the road, that's a different vertical difference than you have here, right? When you're going around the elbow, the difference is the same. So the run, the rise is always the same. Here, it's a little bit different. So now I know the slope from here to here has to be at least 1.072% so that I get it exactly 1% on the gutter. Okay. Now this is a funny number to deal with. So we want to round it up to the nearest quarter or half percent. So what I would do here is I say, you know what, let's just round it up 1.25. If I make the center line steeper, this is going to be greater than 1%. So now I'm going to design my road center line at 1.25 from here to here. And that'll guarantee that the gutter is going to be a little bit steeper than 1%. Okay? So like the expression I used before, th this tail is wagging the dog. I'm designing the dog, but you have to consider what the tail is going to do when you design that center line. Okay? You have to design the center line. You have to design the center line to guarantee the gutter requirement. And that's true in all cul-de-sacs, and that's true in all elbows. Where you have your standard 20, it's fine. Whatever you do on the center line, the gutter is going to be parallel on both sides. It's going to be close enough. But with these large deviations in width on a cul-de-sac or a crescent, you have to go through these calculations. Most municipalities have a center line minimum grade of half percent and a gutter grade of greater than half percent. In Richmond Hill, it's one uh, percent. You'll see next semester in Milton, it's, it's I think, 0.75 percent. Uh, so they always exaggerate it a little bit to guarantee you have flow. Water must flow in the gutter. And, the, you know, half percent on the gutter because of its flat nature is, is always a little bit challenging. You don't want standing water. Otherwise, you're going to get ponding and, uh, you know, hydroplaning in the, in the summer months. And then, uh, you know, you could end up with ice in the winter. So that's the procedure. I know it's a little bit complicated. We're using a combination of, you know, rise over run equals slope. But the run, the run, the distance and plan is coming from stuff you draw in AutoCAD. Nothing simple 3D here. I'm just leveraging AutoCAD a little bit to get my lengths and uh, my runs. Okay. Any questions about this procedure? Okay. So now at this station, all the way to this station, I know what slope to use. And if I go to my elbow, from the beginning of the elbow, draw a quick sketch here from the beginning of my elbow right from the beginning of my elbow and this is the center right from the beginning of my elbow to the end of my elbow zone i know what slope to use here so this has to be in my case at least 1.5 at the at the crest
sometimes I'm going to use 1.25 at the cul-de-sac, and everywhere in between where I have a standard 20, I'm going to use half percent. So on a typical width, half percent everywhere. When you go through a knuckle, I'm going to use 1.5. When I go at the end of the uh, cul-de-sac, I'm going to use 1.25. And that will guarantee the minimum gutter on those unusually wide spots. Can you please repeat how you got 99426, 99426. Uh, where's 99426? Uh, this one? How about that, Stephen? You want to know where this number came from? Yeah. So I have to start with a number. I'm going to assume the elevation here is 100. And then I'm going to go downhill all the way to here at 1%. So I know the run. I know the length. I got that from AutoCAD, right? The length of the green line is right here, 57,445. I want this to be exactly 1%. So here it is. If the slope is 1% and I know the run, calculate the rise. So that's the vertical difference if you go from here downhill to here. So if that's the rise, I take 100 subtract, right, if this is elevation 100, I'm going to subtract this distance vertical, and then the elevation at the other end, which is this point here, is 99.426. Does that make sense? Right, remember, the distance from here to here in the, in the profile or the side view is the distance along the gutter line, so that's the run. I can calculate the rise, right, 1% of the run is the rise. I know the elevation here, I'm assuming is 100. I'm going to subtract the rise to get the elevation at the other end, which is this point. Okay. Yeah, Jacob, so this is the time to work this out. This is a very typical standard calculation. What changes from project to project is the length. The geometry is different in plan, so the center line length and the gutter line length all changes, right? So you need those two distances. And typically, if you draw them correctly in AutoCAD, you can get it pretty quick, the length of the polylines. And then you go through this analysis, rise over run equals slope. I have the run, I have the slope, what's the rise? Now I can use that rise somewhere else, figure out a new slope, and so on. Okay, so this procedure uh, is, is a very typical uh, calculation when you're designing cul-de-sacs and crescent. Okay? All right. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to draw a sketch of what the design should be, okay? Very quickly. And then I'll show you how to input it into AutoCAD. <coughs> Civil 3D rather. So remember, we have the existing profile, we have the pavement, and we have the shoulder, and then your, then your existing ground might come down like mine, it might come down and then back up, it might go up, it could be, depends which topple you're using. So it doesn't matter what's happening inside the subdivision, everybody is dealing with the existing crown and the two edges of pavement and then two shoulders. That's typical, everybody's got this shape. The design, remember I said, all the way to the end of the subdivision is going to start here and go up at half percent. Oops. Right. So I'm going to start here, I want to respect that elevation, and I'm going to go up at half percent. But where this beginning, remember the elbow? The elbow looks like this, it comes around and comes down here and down here, remember? At this station and at this station, between these two stations, which we're going to identify and plan, there's two stations where half percent is not going to work. I need to make it steeper. In my case, I calculated 1.5. So I'm going to do this again. That's no good. This is no good. Between here and here, I want to go 1.5%. And then all the way to the end, it's standard 20 meters, I can go half percent again, 0 0.5. And then when I get to the entrance of the cul-de-sac, from here all the way to here, wherever this station is and wherever this station is, I want to go... 1.25 percent. Okay. So we start at the existing edge of asphalt. We go where it's a standard 20 meter wide. I can use half percent. Then to go around this area here, I need at least one and a half. So this station begins. This station ends where I need one and a half. Then standard 20 meter right of way, I can go at half percent. And then from that point up to the end, I need to go 125. So what's this station? What's this station? Then go up steep. So when you look at that, it looks kind of funny. Well, why not just use half percent? Well, right here we have an elbow. And over here we have a cul-de-sac. Okay, so 1.25. So, so that's basically the design. You need to confirm this. 
make sure you know what these numbers should be. Round them up a little bit, right? A quarter percent or a half percent. Uh, always round up so that you guarantee you have at least 1% along this gutter and 1% along this gutter. Okay? And that's almost the whole story. There's one more thing to discuss, but that's generally what you've done. Any questions about that? Okay, now one thing, one last thing to look at with the standard. If we zoom in here, what's the slope here? What, what would the design slope be on the tangent? What's the slope on the pavement, approximately? What's a standard tangent slope? 2%, right. And from the center line, from the center line, it's going to be minus 2%. If you think about it in profile, right? We're going downhill. This one is actually positive going uphill, right? So we're going to come down, I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to go down at 2%, negative 2, and then at the edge of asphalt, to this point here, I'm going to go up, positive half percent. This is the profile. What's the A value? Remember highways? What's the change in slope? The change in slope? 2.5. That's A, right? The change in slope, right? We're going from negative 2 we're going to add two and a half to get to positive 0.5. Everybody with me? Nightmares from highways. Yeah, everybody remember that? Let's go back to the standards. There's a note about this. If I was teaching this in class, this is when I walk to the door and stand on, uh, right near the door so nobody runs away. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the standards. Whoops, not that one. Uh, this one. So if we go back to the standard... That speaks to, I forget where it was now. Let me go back to my bookmarks. If I go back to here and we talk about vertical alignment. Uh, vertical alignment, here we go. So the minimum slope is going to be half percent. Okay, And this project, we're not going to get anywhere near the maximum. So don't even worry about it. 5%. It's half percent. With these exceptions, right? Minimum gutter grade of 1% on the cul de sacs and the elbows. Good. Here's the other note. If you have a grade change of more than 1.5%, you need a vertical curve. So let's go back to the drawing. If, if A is equal to 1.5 or greater, you need a vertical curve. I have 2.5. I'm supposed to put a vertical curve here. That's what the standard says. Okay? I don't want to do that. If I do that, then I'm going to be reconstructing part of the asphalt. Okay? I don't want to disturb the existing pavement, right? I don't want to ex disturb the existing pavement. I want to match this point here. If I put a vertical curve in, and then it's going to destroy part of the existing road. I don't want to do that. So here's the trick at the intersection. Okay? This is the scenario. If you're connecting to a tangent, everybody understand the problem? Any questions about what I'm, what I, what I'm dealing with? And I'll show you how to, how to deal with it now. But that's the problem. If I have an A value bigger than 1.5, I need to put a vertical curve. But well, I don't want to put a vertical curve. So how am I going to fix this? Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. If you're connecting to a tangent, right? If you're connecting to a tangent, and you're coming down at 2%, what we're going to do is take that asphalt, edge. I'm going to come down at half percent for a little bit, and then I'm going to go up at positive half percent. So instead of starting here at half percent, instead of starting here at half percent, back drawing, instead of starting right at the edge of asphalt, because the difference between positive point zero point five and negative two the change in grade here is 2.5. What's the change in grade here between negative 2 and negative 0.5? What's the A value here? 1.5. Do I need a vertical curve? No. As long as I'm less than 1.5, if it's greater than 1.5, you need a vertical curve. I have exactly 1.5, I don't need a vertical curve. If this is negative a half and this is positive a half, what's the A value here? One. That's also less than 1.5. So instead of starting my design here and then having to deal with a vertical curve, I'm going to take that existing slope, match that point, 
come down at half percent over a certain distance. And we'll discuss what that needs to be. There's a minimum distance here. And then once I get to this low point, there's a low point in the road, right? Low point here. Then from there, I'm going to come up at half percent. Now I have 1.5% grade change, a 1% grade change, no vertical curve, no vertical curve. And that's the trick. Okay? So I'm just looking at the standard and finding a creative way of avoiding putting a vertical curve in. And this is typical. When a slope wants to come down, you typically don't match the edge of asphalt. You come down below it and then come up to it gently. So that the two points here have a grade change of less than 1%. And that's a standard practice in our industry. If you show up to work with that a little bit of knowledge in your back pocket, you're going to go a long way. Okay? That's a typical way of dealing with falling toward an existing road and avoiding the vertical curve. And it's done all the time. Okay? So now let's look at the design again. I'm going to draft it one more time. So if my existing pavement looks like this, right, with the shoulders, I'm going to match this point here, right? I'm going to come down at half percent, 0.5 percent, and if positive change is increasing in this direction, this is going to be a negative slope. Then I'm going to come up at half percent, positive 0.5 percent. Then that's where my cul-de-sac starts. I'm going to go steeper, 1.5 to the end of the, uh, sorry, the crescent, right? So that's the crescent zone. Then I'm going to go on a typical 0.5 percent. These are all positive. When I get to the entrance of the uh, cul-de-sac, I'm going to go up to the end at 1.25%. And that's my design. Negative 0.5, positive 0.5. 1.5 through the elbow, 0.5 on the standard 20, and then 1.25 on the uh, cul-de-sac. And that's generally it for everybody. What's going to be different from uh, person to person? Where you put these station values and the distance between them, right? It's going to vary, right? These points in the plane are going to be different depending on which subdivision you're working on. But that's generally the design. Everybody will have one, two, three, four, five tangents with those slopes. The length is going to vary from subdivision to subdivision, but those are the slopes. <clears throat> the trick is, what's this station value? 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 You need to know the stations so that you can type in the slopes. You remember when you go to a profile, you're going to get that table, and the first two columns are station elevation, right? But then you can type in the grade. Remember grade, grade in and grade out, right? There's a couple of columns here with a grade in and grade out. I'll show you how to use those, okay? So the next step is to go to Civil 3D, but this is the design. This is the concept for everybody to follow. That's what your profile should look like. What's going to vary are the station values, right? How far apart these things are, depending on which subdivision you're working on. Depending on which topple you got, what elevations you're going to have. But at a glance, they'll all look like this. If there's a very small section of straight road between elbow and bulb, is it practical to just continue the grade? Uh, sometimes it is, but don't do that. Try and keep it as low as possible, right? So what you're saying is if this distance, if this gap is very, very small, can I just start my one, two, five, and go all the way to the end? That's practical. You can do that, but please don't. I recommend you don't do that. We're trying to get to the end of the subdivision as low as possible. So you're taking advantage of half percent when you can so that you can have the lowest elevation possible at the end of the site uh, is what we're trying to achieve. Okay. So, uh, you know, there, there's reasons why uh, you, you do or don't do that. Right now, I'm telling you don't do that. Right? So on the straightaways, when you have a standard 20, uh, use half percent. Right? But through the elbow and the cul-de-sac, you can use the steeper values. Any questions about the concept? Okay. This, is the, this is kind of a boardroom discussion. Right? We're starting this project. How are we going to do it? This is what I want you to design. Now you can go to Civil 3D and actually input the design. Okay, and that's what I want to show you next. And the next part of the lecture is really just uh, sit back and watch so you get a preview of what you need to do. And then you can go ahead and practice it. You can review the video uh, and then you can, uh, you can review the, uh, the procedure. Okay? If you try and do what I'm about to show you, you might miss something. So my suggestion is sit back, fold your arms and uh, watch. Okay? and watch what I do and understand what it is you need to do. Okay? 
When I'm teaching you something, it's important to understand what you're doing and why. How to do it, you can always learn that any time, right? But what and why is more important. Should we wait for our assignment to come back before doing uh, No, you can proceed to do your, your, uh, your uh, assignment three. You can start doing this even if you don't know the results. If you have to make changes, then you can always adjust this design later, right? So if, if it turns out that the, like, let's say the station values uh, you design them here, they're supposed to be further apart. Maybe you messed up. You can always fix that later. Okay? So you don't have to throw anything away. You have to make an adjustment for sure, but you can at least proceed. Okay? I'll talk about that when I do it. Okay? But I wouldn't wait because it's good practice. Then if you get it right, you're good to go. If you didn't, it's a minor adjustment. All right, so let's go to Civil 3D and identify these things. Um, the first thing we want to look at is where is this low point station? 